Hi, today we're going to look at the basic brush stroke used in jazz. But before we start, I'd just like to say that many people use different strokes to create the same sound. There's no right way or there's no wrong way. There are better ways and hopefully today I'll show you one of the basic fundamental ways to do this that I found very helpful for myself and for my students to get started. We look at the right hand technique, we look at the left hand technique and how we put them together. We'll add our bass drum, we'll add our hi-hat, and then eventually, hopefully within a short period of time, we'll have the complete stroke and many different variations that you can use. So let's get started, and we'll start with the right hand technique. The right hand is a direct copy of the classic jazz cymbal swing beat played on the snare drum. But before we actually even do that, it's best to look at just the quarter note. Now, the first beat is played here around four o'clock and the beat two is played at one o'clock. And the same for three and four. So let's have a listen to it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very simple. Nothing to it. Now let's add that skip beat or the extra beat that creates the jazz cymbal beat. That's going to happen just before beats three and one, which is at four o'clock. So maybe around half three, we'll get the skip beat. Let's have a listen. One, two, three, four. So you notice I'm moving back into position. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if I'm playing that beat faster, the distances might reduce. This one o'clock, four o'clock, half three idea is just a basic model. But as we play faster, we wouldn't have the distances quite so wide because it's unnecessary. Let's have a look at it a little faster. One, two, one, two, three, four. The hand is still moving back, but in shorter distances. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Nothing to it. The left hand. There are many different strokes you can do with the left hand. Commonest one is just circles. Now these circles can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Sometimes people will do sweeps across the drum or even straight lines. So there are many different variations of it. For me personally, I like to do the circles clockwise. I also like to do two in every bar so that we reach the same point at each time in the bar. So it will connect with your right hand. A little more about that in a second. So the circle I like to do is a small circle. And my right hand is playing here while my left hand is playing here. And they don't overlap, which is a very common technique in, brush in brushes, but is one I don't employ. So for example, my right hand would be here and my left hand is here. And when this plays a circle, it actually doesn't go over my right hand. Let's have a look at the circle now with the left hand. I like to do a smaller circle, as I was saying, so not to engage with the right hand. Now, what I need to do in that circle when I'm playing time is to give it a pulse. It's not enough just to play a circle, otherwise it'll just meander. Sometimes that can be a nice effect under a ballad stroke, but when we're playing time, we want to give it a beat. So in order to do that, what I do is I apply a little pressure at the top of the stroke, again around one o'clock, but that falls and beats two and four. So in other words, when I'm doing my circle, one, two, three, four, I add up one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
four. Now, what that does, that connects my left hand to the right hand. Because my right hand is up here at two, and my left hand is giving a little bit of pressure. So now they feel a little more coordinated rather than the whole circles, downstrokes sort of feeling. So let's see how they work together. But first of all, I'm just going to play quarter notes with the right hand rather than the full single beat. So here we go. We start at nine o'clock with the left hand, three o'clock with the right hand. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's a little downward pressure on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if I look at my shape in my left hand, it's actually closer to an oval shape than it is to a proper circle. But I think you get the idea. One, two, three, four. Now let's play the full jazz beat. So I'll do the skip beat on the way back down. And here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Try a little faster. One, two, one, two, three, four. As you know, it's very common to add the hi hat on two and four. So if we put that in there, again, we'll re reinforce that stroke. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Together on the two and four, which gives it that pulse. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Slower tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our bass drum could be added on each of the four beats where I was counting. We'd have to play it super quiet, otherwise it'll bury the snare drum sound, the brush sound. This quiet playing on the bass drum is known as feathering, as you probably know, because it's, it's as if it's as quiet as playing with a feather. Let's listen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Faster, one, two, three, four. And that's the basic stroke. So let's have a look at placing accents within that stroke now. Remember, there are two different types of accents in brushes. There's the open accent, when, when you play this drum, the brush comes off it and makes the skin resonate. There's also the closed accent, where you play into the head and leave the brush on the head. Now, normally the second one will be used more, for the simple reason is that when you play your accent, Regardless of whether it's open or closed, the chances are there'll be another brush sitting on the head which will naturally close the accent. So that's what we look at now. So, let's look at the right hand accents. As we said, this beat plays one, two, three, four, plus the and of two and the and of four. And any of those beats can be accented individually. Let's look at them separately. We play the skip beat, one, two, three, four, the jazz beat. Let's put the accent on one and three. I know it goes against every fibre of my being, but for demonstration purposes, I'll do it. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now 
Let's get rid of that. Thank you. Move to two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Feels better. One, two, and would naturally be employed within the stroke. That's on the two and four. We also have the and of two and and of four. Now we have two methods we can do with that. We can include the three in it, or we can tie the three so it's play so it's silent, played silently, if you know what I mean. So, in other words, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, four, and one. Or if we don't play the three, it gets one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. Let's hear how it sounds within the stroke. One, two, the basic stroke. Now we'll just put it in with the three played. One, two, and one. And without. One, two, three, four. Uh -huh. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, without. Sorry. Two, three. Oh, we got it now. And one. And with. So that means the right hand can play the accents on one, two, three, and four, and of two, or and of four. That only leaves the and of one and the and of three left for the left hand. So let's play our beat and show how they are played with the left hand. We try to continue our circle, keep it as natural as possible, but we lift the hand, play the accent in the appropriate place, and return immediately to our circle. Let's try it. So we can look at the and of one first. Here we go. One basic beat. Here we go, and one, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I'll keep my left, my right hand quiet on the two, so to allow that three, four, one, two. The end of three, same thing. One, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, one, and two, three, four, both. So that, those cover our eight eighth notes. So let's play around a little bit where I will put the high hand on two and four, play the basic beat, and add various accents. To help me along with this, I'm going to use a little backing track, walking bass. From my favourite instructional tool, it's called Meet the Bass Player, and it's uh, by Alan Cox. There's a link to where you can buy it down below. Lots of different meters, lots of different tempos for you to play along to. Just bass and guitar. This time it's rhythm changes. The uh, tempo is 160 BPM, and I'm going to employ high hand two and four, no bass drum at this point and use some of the accents that we talked about.
The bass drum can also be used for adding accents in the same way as the snare drum. In other words, we can keep our basic stroke, add our accents to one, two, three, and four, or any of the ands, and they'll just line up with the left hand. Let's see how it works. I'll keep the hi-hat in two and four, basic strokes, and change the accents. So let's do it on one and three. One, two, one, two, three, four, basic stroke. Now again, the one and three goes contrary to what I'm used to. Here it goes. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah. And one and a three. That would fall in the same place as your left hand. One, two, three, four. and match the accents between the snare drum and the bass drum and then we get a dynamic forward motion or conversation going on that works to accompany the solos. Hi-hat will stay in two and four and we'll split the accents between snare drum and bass drum. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. see we can mix and match them. That material that we've covered to date should be enough to get you started on the road. Remember basic strokes, accents with each hand, accents on the bass drum, feathering the bass drum, hi-hats two and four and keep the groove nice and steady. Remember the brushes have got to have a stronger pulse as you would with sticks. It just feels a little different, more legato but it still needs to drive. Anyway, I hope that helped you. As ever, drop by my website, connorgilfoyle.com, or my YouTube channel has plenty more lessons on it. Hope you enjoy, and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.